welcome. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBinClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben, your host here on the site that teaches you how to play mandolin and guitar. This week is Banjo Week. We're doing another bag of licks. All of y'all love the bag of licks lessons. I love the bag of licks lessons. Even my mama loves the bag of licks lessons because they're so applicable for your actual playing. So what we're going to talk about today is just some blues rolls over that G chord. So a lot of times when we're just backing up over that one chord, we want to throw something in that's a little interesting, something that catches the ear of folks, and is also fun to play. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to teach you eight of these great little blues rolls licks. But more than that, we're going to talk about what makes them and how we can alter them and how we can create more. So I not only want to just teach you those eight, I want to teach you how to make up your own eight and then your own other eight. Multiples of eight all the way up to 64 or so. Whatever you want to do. Hey, if you're not a member of the site already, I'd love to have you on board at BanjoBenClark.com. You can be a Gold Pick member. Access this lesson and hundreds of other lessons there. Um, if you're already on the site, don't forget to download the Jamtrack MP3s. It's just a long time of me playing that G chord on a guitar and bass and mandolin chop. It gives you an opportunity to practice these at different speeds. Let's get started. The first thing I want to do is teach you a little utility roll that we're going to use to base all of these licks upon. If you want to learn more about these utility rolls, you're in luck because I have a full lesson called Banjo Utility Rolls where we look at these over the one, four, and five chord. But here's just a nice four measure utility roll that's easy to break out of and create these different licks. And it kind of forms the skeleton, the foundation of the licks I'm going to teach you today. It sounds like this. things to point out it's mostly based on a forward roll which attributes to your drive and also it starts out with that pinch in the first beat that allows us to establish a big strong downbeat as well and each one of these licks that we're going to learn today starts with those two, that two string pinch because I love how it just grabs your attention kind of sets you up to want to hear something more with that being said, let's take a look at the first lick. Sounds like this. Okay, we've got a couple different things in here that we're going to see a lot of today. Of course, we're starting out with that pinch, just like I talked about. And then we're going to slide into the fifth fret on that fourth string. That's just to reinforce that, that root note. Now we're going to keep our forward roll going as we get to measure seven and do a 16th note hammer on. And then we're gonna reverse our roll at the second half of measure seven and do a little choke. We're just gonna bend it up a little bit. You can bend it as far as you want, I guess, but I think it sounds good just to do a little. And then we'll end with a pinch as well. One more time. A little faster. So if we're going to use that in the context of the utility role that I talked about, um, it would sound like this. And this is, you know, if we're playing over a song that has four or six or eight measures of the G chord in a row, or you're coming back into it, it sounds pretty good. Well, I think that sounds pretty nice. And it's not that difficult. What I want you to see in that lick is that when we do that hammer on, that, that doesn't interrupt our forward roll at all. We could have played a, a, an open B string there, an open G string. We're just throwing that hammer on in there just to make it more interesting. Now, let's check out lick number two. Slowly, it sounds like this. One more time. Again, we have the big forward roll going. In fact, the forward roll does not get interrupted at all, does it? Except for that pinch there in measure 11. And that's one of the variations that I'd suggest you consider is that you don't have to do that pinch. You could do a roll. So look at the beginning of measure 11. Sounds like this. We could keep that a roll. It would sound pretty good. Also, we don't have to only hammer on at the beginning of measure 11. We, what if we did that also at the end of measure 10? 
that sound like this. So really, anytime we come around to that G string, we have an opportunity to hammer on, and it sounds pretty good. You can do it as many times as you want. You could also turn the last beat of measure 10 into a hammer-on pinch, just like we do in measure 11. It brings a little bit more syncopation in. It would sound like this. But as written, pretty cool lick there. Yes, I agree. We're in agreement. Okay, lick number three. This is a great lick. It's all eighth notes, okay? And it's a bit syncopated and it kind of toys with your ear just a little bit. I love it. it sounds like this slowly. Just a note is that the pull off, I'm doing, pointing up toward the ceiling. So I'm using my middle finger to flick off like that, okay? Some people might call that a push off, but I still, I call it a pull off whether you go down toward the floor or whether you pull off up toward the ceiling. Again, make sure not to get in a hurry. This isn't a 16th note pull off. So if you need to count it, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. I will also tell you to leave your ring finger down in measure 15 on that third fret because I like that B flat note ringing out. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now what could we do to this lick to give some more variations? Well, here's a really big lesson. You ready? One of the ways that I love to come up with new licks is to take licks that I already know and start messing with the components and shifting them either ahead an eighth note or behind an eighth note. So if we're gonna do that to this lick, let me just show you what that would look like. And it, you come up with some pretty different sounding licks. So look at measure 15. We've got that pull off starting on which beat? It's on the and of one, okay? So the, the downbeat of one, is of course that fifth string, and then you come down for the and of one to start the pull off. What if we instead made the pull off start on the downbeat? Well, we would need an extra note in there, wouldn't we? Well, we could do that by just adding another first fret in later on. So as written, here's what 15 sounds like. What I'm proposing is that we start it with the pull off, play all the notes, and then add another first fret in to give us all the notes that we need. It sound like this. Okay, that's pretty cool. How would the whole lick sound overall? That sounds pretty cool. We could also move that pull off back a half beat so that it starts on the downbeat of two. So what would we play on the first beat? Well, we've already got our fifth string there at the start of measure 15. What if we just add a first string in for the end of one? Then we start the rest of the lick. Might sound like this. And then we could erase that, that open first string and just go right into the choke. So it's like, So the way it's written sounds like this. If we move it up, it sounds like this. If we move it back, it sounds like this. Okay, so all we've done is we've just taken that pull off and we've just shifted it. A half beat one way or the other, added or taken away other notes to make up for that, and we have a pretty different sounding lick. In fact, let me just play it through three times. I'll do it the way it's written first. Then I'll move it up, then I'll move it back. You can hear them all in context. Sound like this. The way it's written. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Pretty cool, all right? So we can, we can bring a lot of variation into our playing 
without learning a whole bunch of other licks because we just know how to doctor the licks that we already know. Okay, well, we've got five more to learn and they're really fun. Um, but that's the end of this little video segment. If you're watching on the site, just click on the next one. Uh, if you're watching somewhere else, I'd love to have you on board at banjobenclark.com. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson so far. Let's keep pushing on. Thank <music> you.